Good everyone, I hope you guys have an amazing day. So what I'll do today, right, I will be talking about some of the licensing aspect uh, of public sector solution. Now, it's very important that um, if you are recommending a solution, right, as a consultant or as an architect to your client, you need to understand the licensing model because you can't really go and recommend a solution to say, hey, this is a solution which is very popular. Uh, I would highly encourage you to use it, which is great, but you need to talk about the money side of things as well because what might happen, the business might say, look, we don't have a funding for this year, right? So we can't really use uh, public sector solutions. So it's very important to understand, you know, uh, the funding side of things, uh, sorry, the licensing side of things. So this is the um, uh, Salesforce page, right? The public sector solution pricing. So as you can see that they have uh, three three options here. One is the public sector foundation advanced enterprise edition, um, which is uh, 25, sorry, 275 US dollar per user per month, uh, which seems, uh, you might say, mm, <laughs> seems a bit expensive, but uh, or the other one is the Public Sector Foundation Advanced Unlimited Edition, uh, 500 uh, USD, right, per user per month. Then we have Public Sector Einstein, uh, which contains your uh, all the good stuff. I'll, I'll just talk about it in a second. But uh, the pricing is 650 bucks USD per user per month, right? Um, so it it may be it might seems like an expensive option. Um, so uh, so like I said, right, depends on your use case, okay? Now, you must be thinking, right, we could build in-house without really worrying about the public sector. You could, right? If you have the team capability to do that um, and you think that the, the return of investment by doing that will be higher, then sure, go ahead with that. But sometimes what happens, right, if you are a government agency, they really don't want to use their in-house team to build a complex product. So if you're getting something out of box, right, so most of the business tends to go that route. So that's why, you know, they have a different pricing model, right? So uh, 651, you might think it's a bit of a drag uh, because of a lot of extra functionality uh, that comes along with it. Then you have a 500 one. So let's look at 275 bucks one first, right? So you get out of box configurable apps. So obviously, if you remember in my first episode of the PSS, I did briefly touch about different apps that comes with it. Uh, you know, like your licensing app, management apps, um, your grant and um, uh, your uh, inspection management. There are uh, a lot of different out of box func uh, apps you can get. Um, with your PSS, and which also means that a lot of out of box data models will be given to you as well, so that you don't have to build your own. Um, but like I said, right, it's up to you, right? It's up to your business needs. If you think uh, that investing in a PSS is a wiser option, then go for it. If you think you can build the exact replica using your in-house team, you can go for it as well, right? So uh, both has its own pros and cons, uh, as I'm trying to say. Um, then you have, uh, you know, digital service delivery tools, uh, low code, that's all like Omni Studio and uh, kind of things, right? And the business engine, all those good things. Then you have a uh, 500 bucks model, which is all the enterprise edition capabilities you will get, which is great, right? And up to 200 uh, custom objects, up to 120. So this is really useful if you are a very big agency, government agencies wanted to implement. But if you are a tiny one, right, then I would say 275 seems like a good idea. Uh, however, right, if you have an AI need, if you wanted to use the data cloud, then obviously 650 will do. Now you might think, hey, we got 3,000 users, so 650 times 3,000 is going to. Um, that's something you need to work out with your Salesforce account executive, right, to see uh, if you can get a discount or if you have a better deal, right? So they are quite flexible when it comes to that. So it's just up to your uh, business, you know, 
and the account executive looking after your uh, business stuff, right? So that's the conversation you need to have. And mostly Salesforce is quite flexible because obviously, you know, it's in their own interest. They want to bring the product to, to different businesses, right? So if you have a large business need, so obviously they are very flexible in that. So see what uh, fits the business needs. So as a consultant, you need to put this across, right? So uh, now data cloud, right? Data cloud is an interesting topic. Because obviously Salesforce has been aggressively pushing the data cloud. In my personal opinion, I believe it's a great product. But if you talk to architects from uh, different domains, like from a, from you know from SAP, or uh, if you have an architecture team, right, and where people from a different technology tech stack work together, they might think, look, it's not it's nothing special about the Salesforce technology, right? It's just one of the cloud. And we can do that in Oracle as well. We can do that in Azure as well. We can do that in, um, you know, a Google Cloud as well, right? So w- what makes Salesforce special? So it depends who you talk to and depends upon the business use case. That's very important, right? At the end of the day, any technology is only useful as long as it's going to meet to fulfill your business needs, right? So if you are bringing a technology which is not going to serve you any good in terms of solving your business challenge, then the technology is not useful for your business. But that does not make a technology useless, right? Because it might be useful for other use case elsewhere. So that's why it's very important to work out the use case and then see, you know, if if your business needs an AI or data cloud or Slack collaboration. I haven't used Slack, right? I haven't used Slack at all. I've been in the Salesforce ecosystem for for a long time, right? I haven't used Slack, and I don't feel the need of using Slack. But that being said, some might disagree. But you know, that's individual uh, exposure and and the use case I was involved, with, right? Even today, you know, I I'm an architect at one of the the biggest New Zealand government agency, so we don't use Slack there. We don't have any use case for it. Um, and just because, you know, two, three people uses it or two business, I, I'm not going to say, look, we should be using it. You don't need it, right? Um, obviously, you know, we are very big on Microsoft Teams. So, and Microsoft Teams has Copilot and all, all the good stuff, right? So, and yeah. Okay. So, now... Let's look at some of the features, which is very important, right? Like I said, you might think, hey, why I'm talking about this? Well, because, like I said, you are a consultant, you are an architect, or you're an admin. It's very important to understand the licensing model, right? Otherwise, you will end up in recommending some product, and the client will get really annoyed because you didn't actually discuss the pricing. Okay, so for for uh, so till omnichannel. All of this um, product, right? Um, all of this licensing model uh, is similar. Like right? you got public sector pre-built apps, uh, public sector data models, public sector toolkit, constituent snapshot, omnichannel. It's included in all of this license. The the one which is not included and is only a part of service edition, that six fifty bucks one, is the best of Salesforce for service. And same comes with other aspects as well. Like you get uh, all of this for any license model you choose, right? Benefit management, emergency program management, grant management. These are the core uh, PSS licensing. uh, Sorry, these are the core PSS modules. And I will say that it will be silly for them not to include it in any of the licensing model. Um, So I'm glad. Uh, this is a great thing Salesforce done. They included the license and inspection management, provider management, grant management. But like I said, right, PSS is a great product, right? I'm I'm not saying because, you know, I, I'm a Salesforce architect or I've been using Salesforce for a while, but I've seen the use case, right? And I think it's, it's, it's a great product and a lot of things you can do with the out-of-box functionality. That's the advantage I'm trying to say. You don't have to customize a lot of things, right? Autobox is a great option. It saves company a lot of time. You can use Autobox, build it, ship it, right? Customer can use it. Based on the feedback, you can improve. If you need customization, sweet. You can add customization, right? So then you have um, other stuff, right? You got, these are, we are looking at the provider stuff, right? So we have our care plan. 
and then we have telephony integration right which is the CTI, uh, CTI which is very good um, ARC ARC is very good I will demonstrate the ARC functionality it used to be part of a financial cloud in the past right now I think they what they've done they bought into they bought this functionality uh, into PSS and which is really good right I have seen uh, the ARC functionality live and I've seen its use case um, so I think it's a, it's a great uh, uh, feature to have right and I'll, I'll like I said I'll demonstrate this as a part of the PSS uh, uh, the stuff you're doing um, so obviously the given the fact it's a 30 days license I was planning to do two videos a week but I might have to do three or four maybe a week because Otherwise, I'll run, I'll run out of license, right? And I cannot demonstrate this on my work org because that is a customer data and it is forbidden for, to do that. So I will not be doing it. So um, then we have a chat uh, live agent, uh, which is, uh, I don't know, it's a dollar sign. It's a bit confusing for me. I Maybe you might have to pay. I, I don't know. But it's available for all other stuff. Complaints, engagement timeline, live events. Then you have identity verification audit trails, uh, interaction summaries, which is really good. Interaction summaries, right? Um, uh, outcome management, record alert, circulatory codes and fees, visit scheduling, volunteer management, group membership, if you're using any of this. So it's available to all of these features, except the chat live is available to every license model, right? So you can go with this one. Now with the chat live, you might have to chat to this guy, whatever it is on the side, to say, hey, look, what is this stuff here, right? <laughs> okay, now it reduced cost to serve with automation and AI, right? Obviously, um, if you're using, I mean, I'm not sure it depends on how you're using accounting side of things. Sometimes you might have other ERP systems sitting on top, like for instance, Financial Force. Um, so I am not 100% sure how relevant this one will be uh, as a part of the licensing model, but obviously they're giving it if you're buying it. So then you have action plan and there's a business rule engine. So business rule engine, right? This is interesting. Now, I was involved in one of the I'm not going to get into much, much details. I was involved in one of the cancer projects, right, in New Zealand. That's just giving you an overview. So we had an option to use a business engine, but we didn't because of the transactional limit it hit. Instead, we used an open source, which was free, and sales was made a lot of fuss, right? Hey, you should have used business engine because the problem with that, right, they, you know, they made whatever fuss for whatever reason because obviously they have a sales intention in mind, right? So if a big agency is going to use that, they're going to charge more. But instead, we decide to go with open source, which which is not going to bring any money to Salesforce, right? So obviously, Salesforce will make a fuss. Hey, look, that's not flexible. That's not flexible. That's usual their marketing strategy. They like every big vendor they try to convince, right? With all their fancy jargon to say why should be using it. But business rule engine is okay. But I am not a big fan of business rule engine because. I felt that their business rule engine is a bit clunky, but that's my opinion. But uh, if I have to use it, I would prefer to use the same open source what we use because it's very flexible, right? And it costs you nothing. You just need a place to host it. You can host it anywhere you want. And it will. you can get a million transactions in a fraction of, it's one-tenth of the price of what business rule engine costs you. And that will not even give you one million transaction, right? If, you, if you're looking for one million transaction, right? you can imagine it's going to cost you fortune, right? So I will, so I have no opinion about business rule engine, right? I would prefer, you know, to use something else, but yeah, that's a, that's a question of debate, I would say. Uh, decision uh, explainer, then dynamic assignment, then dynamic forms. Uh, this is, uh, Omni Studio is really good, but then Omni Studio has its own. You know, the way I look at Omni Studio, right? Omni Studio, I often see, right? Because I came from a very strong uh, programming background. I, I started with the, with, uh, with the basic when I was 10 year old, then I did assembly programming, then I did C, then C++. For me, Omni Studio is just a wrapper around LWC. That's the way I look at it. So people who don't like to code, they use Omni Studio. Um, is it great? 
it's not a bad product, right? In any ways, that's I would say that uh, it has a lot of functionality, a lot of out of box stuff you can do, and um, a lot of things, great things you can do with that, right? But that being said, um, you just need to watch out how it responds in terms of security and the large data volume, right? So, but um, it is free. Um, it's a part of this licensing model, right? And service uh, process studio you can get, right? Okay, now, what makes this license, two licensing uh, different to 651, right? Like I said in the beginning, when I started this episode, that you won't get any AI capability. If you want data cloud, Einstein for service, uh, service cloud voice, um, uh, stack, uh, enterprise grid, CRM analytics for public sector, uh, custom community plus, Einstein uh, conversation insight. So if you want all of this, then obviously your best option is to um, go with this one if you want all of it, right? If you want only one component of it, then you can add on top of it your existing license. That you, also you can do. So that's something you need to pay attention. That See, that's why it's very important, I believe, right? If you're a consultant, you need to understand your, your, organize, your company's business requirement. It's very important and the use case, right? So depending on the use case, you can say, oh, look, we need data cloud. Some companies say, look, we don't need it. We have a Google Cloud, which can do all of the stuff, right? Good enough. Uh, do you need Einstein? We don't need Einstein. We have Gen AI, inbuilt Gen AI, which we can hook it up. It's also great. So yeah, you, like I said, you need to understand the, the business uh, context. Um, yeah, then, uh, so that's the from a licensing perspective I wanted to cover, right? I mean, obviously, this is not a hands-on session today um, because I just want you guys to give you a rough idea about, you know, how the licensing model is structured. Because in the past, I remember a gentleman reached out to me and said, hey, why don't you cover the licensing model, right? You talk about different products. Uh, so I realized, yeah, he was right, right? I should be doing that. So that's the reason why I often talk about it. So that being said, I hope you guys have an amazing Sunday. Adios.